Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series on a technicality. Before we get into it, just go down below, hit that like and subscribe button, definitely helps us out. What we're taking a look at here is part two of the Hyper Neo Geo motherboard conversion, so we're able to play driving games on our fighting motherboard. So the thing that we left off last time is we're trying to figure out where pin 6 and pin 4 go as far as signals are concerned. So we're going to start mapping pin 6 first to figure out exactly what that signal is because we need to see whether or not we need to move that into the motherboard. So I've just alligator clamped that pin here and then I'm going to pin it on my probe as well. That way I can work with one probe and two hands. And we'll see, we'll just check for continuity all across the board to find out where that signal's going. So if we check the entire Gemma Edge, we do not have any continuity across those. And if we check the pins as well, we're also going to find that there is no continuity between pin 6 to pin 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So just probing around the board here, we're trying to find that continuity. And there it is. We have it on that one solder joint there, as well as this solder joint. So now we know, at least on the underside of the board, where that signal is going. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to flip the board over and kind of trace that back to find out why that pin is there and what the signal is. We're going to find out, now that we have continuity on pin 6 there, and we go through these fuses, we're going to find out that we have continuity through a fuse, and it's going into this 12 volt box right here. So pin 6 is a 12 volt signal, and we're definitely going to need that into the motherboard, and that's what we're going to do with pin 6. And that's the good use of the multimeter here, is that we were able to identify that pin number 6 is carrying a 12 volt signal. That 12 volt is usually used for audio portions of the board, and your 5 volts is going to be your main power. But now we know that pin 6 is going to be essential, so we are going to have to move pin 6 from that I.O. board up into the motherboard to get this game functioning. And I just, like I said, take copious notes, definitely helps you out in the future, so you know what you need to be looking at when you're doing stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on pin 4. That's the other cable we know is connected. Those other three pins are going to be blank and then two 5 volt leads that aren't necessary to boot the game, just kind of a safety precaution for overheating. And we're going to pin drag all the different connectors to try to look for that signal. And we're going to find that at least on those four connectors right there, we are not going to find any continuity between them. So what we're going to have to do is continue to probe the board out and try to find where that pin's going. And as we get up here, we kind of trace it out, we find that this little pad has continuity. So what we're going to have to do is flip the board over and trace that path, see where it is. So it's a little hard to see here, it's behind that little block, but you will see that we have continuity between that little resistor right there and this chip. I checked the chip code to see what was going on. I can't find any reference to it. So I don't know what the signal does, but I know it's traveling all the way through the motherboard, through all these chips and into this area here with all the capacitors. So the minimum I do know is that that signal is pretty important and we are going to want to move that from the IO board up to the motherboard. Even if we don't know what it is, we know it's going to be needed and it doesn't hurt anything because I know via a photo I found it is hooked up. So. There you go, pin 4, I have no clue what it is, but it traces into the PCB, so we will definitely be connecting it. And here's a little hand-drawn schematic of where all those signals are going between the I.O. board and the motherboard. First thing we're taking a look at is the two 5 volt leads and the two grounds that go into the motherboard and the I.O. board as well. And what we're going to discover on those is those are not essential. SNK put those on the board in case you want to dissipate heat coming through the JAMA edge to provide a longer life for the motherboard, but since we're not using this in an arcade setting, it's not essential for us. From there we know pin 6 is 12 volts and we know pin 6 is going to go all the way over here and it's going to hook up into pin 3 on the motherboard. From there we know that pin 5 is going to be your 5 volt line and that's going to hook up into pin 2. We don't know what pin 4 is but we do know it goes to pin 3 and we will be connecting that. And we know ground comes in from the dual port connectors on the top right of the board and that's on port 2 and there's four different grounds so we know that that is what's going to be going on there. So we know where pin 6 goes, we know where pin 4 goes, we know where pin 5 goes and we know where all of our different grounds are coming in from so we have a full schematic of how we need to move signals around the PCB to be able to get it to boot games. We still don't know if the PCB is working yet as it's untested and there you go port 4, four grounds, we're good to go, we can power it on. Pro tip, check what you own. I had the harness in a box, it goes to my Hyper Neo Geo Beastbuster 64 motherboard. Granted we couldn't hook it up and power it on without taking where the leads went first, but I did not need to worry about alligator clips in the front because I actually had the harness. Oops! The only other thing you need to do to get this board to boot is you need to spoof the network board. You need to ground pin 3, 5, 6, 7, 8 to pin 1. That way we can bypass that network check and we've just done that quickly with alligator clips. And now we're powered on and booting into the game. Since we checked where each one of those power leads goes, we know we can't fry anything. 
And once we get past the network check here at about second 36, we are going to be into the game itself. And we're going to find out that there's some pretty bad graphical artifacts that we're going to have to address because this game looks like absolute crap right now. And this is something that happens with the Hyper Neo Geo games. If they're either A, not seated correctly, or B, the contacts are dirty, you get these lines running through the game. I think we can fix that. But what we're taking a look at right now is Offbeat Racer, the second and much rarer game in the Hyper Neo Geo 64 driving category, and it is booted in and the graphics look great. So we're going to have to address the contacts on that cartridge, but we know that at least as far as the IO board is concerned, we are now able to boot into the driving games and we're good to go. And what I did really quickly was I just took a cotton pad, soaked it in rubbing alcohol, 91% isopropyl, cleaned those connections, and now we see that that game as well is booting in with perfect graphics. So that's it. We're able to boot the driving games. Step three in the process is going to have to be wiring up a steering wheel and pedals to be able to control the game. Now my IO board came with no harnesses, so I have absolutely no idea what pins go where, and I have no schematic. So that's actually going to be the second and harder part of getting these games running. Short of that, we'll be back on Tuesday with another mainline episode in the series. Well, thanks so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.